check out the chieftains. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh wow. Look at that color. This is so exciting. Okay guys, today is the day. Long awaited potato harvest video is happening. I'm going to show you how I created my no dig bed. All of the steps I took in building it up, the newspaper, the soil I put in there, as well as walk you through the different potato varieties that I chose to plant. And then I'm going to share with you my harvest. In the beginning, around April-ish, I began the whole no-dig bed process by clearing the area of the yard that I wanted to create the bed, so I weed-whacked out a bunch of dead bracken. If you do this early enough in the spring, you're not really combating established weeds, but it does give you a good opportunity to get ahead of the game. Once that happens, you lay down your weed barrier. I used large pieces of cardboard and then put my soil on top. I leveled out the soil and at that point I began planting my potatoes which you'll see here in a moment. If you are a bit more proactive than I, you might want to do your soil amendments or any kind of compost etc at this point. I've come to the realization, maybe slightly late, that I've not recorded where I'm putting the potatoes in our potato patch. So this video is going to be the only record uh -uh, out of the potato patch Ripley sir. Thank you. This is going to be the only record I have of what potatoes are in what rows. There are a few that I don't actually know the varieties because we saved them from the grocery store and we will see how they turn out. But today is potato planting day. We're gonna get them in the ground, sort of in the ground. We're doing no dig, so I guess it's on top of the ground. So the first potato row is going to be Seigland. Seigland? I'm butchering that, but that's fine. That's going to be the first row because they're apparently early season. If they are, in fact, early, then I can replace this first row with some type of late frost-hardy root crop and still have the rest of the potato patch to harvest in the fall. The second row of potatoes is going to be the Chieftain. They are a red potato with white flesh. They're mid-season, so I'm excited for the Chieftain. Um, some of the seed potatoes for the Chieftain are quite large. Like, let me show you here. This guy, well, I guess he's about a big egg, but I'm excited to see how these produce. These are gonna be the second row. Like I said, they're mid-season. And then we've got the Russian Blues. Russian Blues, and on this specific box that I got, I got these from West Coast Seeds. It actually says that they're an early season potato, and then the first line in the description says late season. So I'm going to put them with my mid-season chieftains right in the middle of the potato patch. Uh, I think that they are actually like a main crop, like a late season potato. So Siegland, Chieftain, Russian Blue. Then we're going into the Yukon Gold, which is also a mid-season. After that, we are in a late season banana. So they're like French fingerlings, but the specific type is banana. So we'll see how those go. Um, I'm intrigued because apparently the texture on those ones are supposed to be really interesting. So, um, yeah, those are the first one, two, three, four, five rows of the potato bed will be the seed starters, potatoes that I purchased from West Coast Seeds this year. And then in our last two rows, we have the grocery store mysteries. They are definitely some type of russet, but I don't have any specific names. We just purchased them at the grocery store. They started to sprout in the pantry, so now we're going to plant them. I'm always excited to see and play around with grocery store, like celeries that you start growing in your kitchen or these potatoes, for example. I think it's a fun way for people who aren't really into purchasing a bunch of seed potatoes or they don't want to have to make that investment or do the research to care about varieties. It's a fun way to get your hands in the dirt and to start growing things without being too invested, I suppose. First row, we have our Seigland, then we have our Chieftains. Then we have the Russian Blues. After the Russian Blue comes the Yukon Gold. 
and then our banana French fingerlings, and then the miscellaneous grocery store haul, and some really dirty hobbit feet. Perfect, perfect day. <laughs> So this whole potato bed, as you guys know, uh, no dig. It's got cardboard underneath. I took some old dirt from our raised beds, put it here, and then put one layer of new topsoil on top. But other than that, little to no work has been done on this bed, and this soil is quite depleted nutrient-wise. So I'm going to be doing the no dig method in this area. This is its first season. I'll plant the potatoes, put grass clippings and straw on top, and then from that point on, I'm just going to continue layering that on throughout the growing season to make sure all of the tubers do not get exposed to any sunlight. But we shall see if we can get this soil looking really good for next year. Potatoes are usually pretty good at sucking up that nutrients out of the dirt, so we shall see how our crop goes. I'm really excited. I think the thing I am most excited to grow this year would be these potatoes. So fingers crossed that this no-dig potato bed goes well. Uh, let's get planting. Guess what, Ripley? It's official! Melly Potato has her very first, very first, oh, very first potato patch! It's planted, it's planted, it happened. This is like a momentous moment. These are the first potatoes I have ever planted, so when I have 10 yards full of potato beds, and I'm worldly renowned and known as the potato whisperer, this will be the day that goes down in history. It's my first ever planted potato patch and the day that I die from malaria and mosquitoes. and a half months of beautiful growth later. It is July 29th, forgive my appearance. I was not planning on filming, but I came out here to the potato patch and a lot of the plants are starting to yellow. Their bottom leaves are starting to fall off. A good three or four rows, which means three or four of the varieties that I planted have already flowered. They are the rows closest to the front, which makes sense because those are my early or mid season varieties. I'm going to have to come in here and harvest them a little bit sooner than I was expecting. The later season ones look to be doing all right, but they have started to like flop over. I'm not sure if that means I need to add more soil or what, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just let them run their course from this point on, but I wanted to show you what some of these have started to look like. So the growth that's still standing up is green. Some of these shoots are even putting off new green growth, but there's a lot of yellowing. And as you can tell right in here, a lot of them have just flopped over.
so excited. This has probably been... Uh, this has been the video I have been the most excited to make for my entire YouTube channel yet. But not only for creating a video and sharing with you guys, this is the most exciting harvest I have ever done. I am so excited to figure out how these potatoes did. Now, before I actually dig up the potatoes, I want you guys to see basically how bad this potato bed looks. These plants do not look happy or healthy. They have all started to die back. All of the foliage is wilted. Everything's laying down. I'll be very honest. When this started to happen a few weeks back, I was really nervous that something bad was happening to my potatoes. I have never grown potatoes before. And for a first time, this is quite a large scale, at least in my opinion. But I really was uncomfortable with the idea of letting these all die back. There was multiple times where I thought that they all had blight or maybe I wasn't watering them enough or maybe I should harvest them right now in case of their rotting. But YouTube reassured me multiple times because I looked it up multiple times that the foliage should die back on your potatoes. It's a natural cycle. They all flowered every variety. They produced their little weird fruits that I showed you that look like tomatoes. And this was just the next stage. And this is kind of how I knew I was getting closer to being able to get them out of the ground. It is forecasted to kind of rain for the next couple of weeks. And I don't want to be digging these out of the ground when they're sopping wet and muddy. So I figured today would be a great day to get in there and check out how our first ever no dig potato bed did and see what we've got for potatoes this year. In order to keep all of the varieties separate and do a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison on how each potato variety did, I'm going to be keeping them in separate buckets as well as putting all of the excess plant matter in our little trailer back there. Wagon? Trailer? You know. This is just a really big exciting day for me. I don't know if it held enough water to have these guys really plump out well. There is quite a little uh, grade that this potato patch is on. So my theory is that if these guys maybe held more water, the individual potato would have gotten a little bit larger. They had a lot of foliage. They flowered fairly early. Um, and there is a lot of potatoes. It's just they're this size. So I'm thinking that maybe they just needed more consistent watering. Yeah, so I'm happy that I got some potatoes. They're not as massive as I was hoping. <laughs> but that being said, it is the first year of this no-dig bed. The nature of no-dig and soil biome and building healthy soil is that it gets better with time. This soil is quite compact once you get low. It's got a lot of clay content. There needs to be more organic matter. I did see some nice worms in there as well as beetles, some good little mycelium growing. So I have a lot of hope for this no-dig bed, but this first row of potatoes for the first year of it I'm not upset. I got good potatoes. There's no um, sign of any kind of scab or anything. They smell delicious, <laughs> which might sound weird, but if you've never just smelled a good earthy potato smell, then you're missing out. So first row done, six more rows to go. And in case if you're wondering, yes, my knees already hurt. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Check out the chieftains. Look at them. Look at them. I will say too, as we get further into the potato patch, the compost got thicker. So the front row was probably the thinnest and the driest. Well, and these two varieties, we're early to mid season, so like they're technically to be harvested smaller anyway. Mm -hmm. Like these ones aren't really for storage. They've got the thinner skins. Like they're not yeah. russets. They're not yeah. the big. Which maybe I should have put them on the bigger side. Like well, maybe. the side that would have grown them easier. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because they're not as like thick. Like this is. It looks like the bag you get for baby potatoes in the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. 
That doesn't look good. No. Maybe they went to the side. I also feel like it's gonna be hard to find them because they're dark. <laughs> If they would have grown, you would have had a man. You would have had a pile of potatoes. There's lots of little guys. I know. It's just the water that's so frustrating. And I like. I even watered them. Like I did water them, but I didn't want to. Like the nice thing would be to just plant them and have a good, nice year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So think... that means to me that at least the soil's not no, like you... it's dry, but it's not horrible soil. No, you got. There'll, there'll be nutrition, nitrogen. And... All kinds of stuff you need in there. Because so. how I started the first part of this bed, like the most of the bulk of the soil. Oh, yeah, it's getting better as we go in. And then what what, what you're going to find is like this stuff. Mm -hmm. It'll take a year or so to break down. Yeah. And you'll be you'll be getting a Much lot of nitrogen from, from that stuff. So. Mm -hmm. um. say it's a very pretty baskets the Russian blue chieftain and the seagulls seagulls I'm butchering that and I say it different every time <laughs> onto the Yukon gold and they look like they got like pink stuff on them oh and you got one by your back foot already You'll survive the winter. <laughs> On the Yukon Gold. Oh yeah, look at this. Tried and true, yes. See, and this is where the compost got way thicker, so I think it also held the moisture really well. Yes. There's... Like there's just a lot more dirt. Yeah. Oh, it's also raining. <laughs> Like that, the potato patch had been picked. Oops. Okay, so we got all the potatoes out. Definitely not the 200 pounds of potatoes I was expecting, but I'm really happy that my uncle Ken and my mom got to come out and share in pulling some of the potatoes out. I got to listen to some stories about half of my family that I don't know a lot of stories about, so that was really special and wholesome and nice. Um, we took a lot out of there. I'm really excited for the way this no-dig bed is definitely going to develop and be a little bit more fertile next year. A big takeaway, potatoes like a lot of water. So I'm going to show you our harvest. The potato harvest recap. So let's take a look at all of the varieties I harvested. I actually got a bunch of the miscellaneous russets that we just planted from sprouted chitting potatoes in our fridge from the grocery store. So it was cool to be able to compare the production of seed potatoes that I bought intentionally next to ones that were just 
for free extras didn't get eaten and began to chit on their own in the fridge. So if you're somebody who has a bunch of those sprouting potatoes, try planting them. You will definitely get a little bit of a yield off of them. I have no idea the variety, but they're definitely some type of russet. And out of all of the varieties I planted, they're some of the largest. They also are probably going to store pretty well considering that they have a lot thicker skins than the other varieties do. So none of the potatoes I took out of the dirt today seemed to have any kind of fungal, viral, bacterial, pest issues. Every one of them looked healthy except for the chieftains. Now, I don't think any type of pest got the chieftains. I think what happened was the soil dried out and then the potato kind of stopped growing and then once it got a good rainfall, it kind of burst. So that's my theory. We got a fair amount of chieftains that are about this size. It is a white fleshed potato that is red on the outside. Really good for boiling up with some butter and dill. Probably what we're going to end up doing. The seagulls, seagulls, sliglins. Um, I got a fair few that were this size. I also got a lot that were tiny, like the size of dimes. So on most of the plants that we pulled out of the ground today, there was probably 15 or 20 dime size little potatoes. And what that tells me, and my uncle Ken concurs with my statement, is that they needed a lot more water. If we got more rainfall this year, if it wasn't such a dry season, I'm fairly confident that this potato harvest would be a lot larger and those dime sized potatoes would have had an opportunity to fill out a lot more. You guys also saw how dry and dusty the dirt was. So I'm definitely going to either need to consistently water my potato patch next year uh, or pray and do a lot of rain dances. But this year has been notoriously dry. I live in BC, Canada. Our entire province is on fire right now. We had 45 degree weeks. That has been record breaking for us here. So learning how to properly manage water has been on the list of things that I need to do when it comes to homesteading and learning how to successfully garden here. So this potato harvest is a testament to the fact that some type of irrigation sprinkler system rain would do us well. I'm particularly surprised at the amount of Russian blues that I got. So Russian blues can get quite large, like this big. Um, I think the largest one I have is this big, but I'll show you guys up close here how many there are. So again, if there was more rain or more moisture available to these plants, this whole harvest would be a lot larger. So I'm excited because to me that means that with the amount of greenery that grew this year, like we had very big lush potato plants and with all of these really tiny tubers, but they were formed tubers, there was a lot of nutrients and the soil isn't as bad off as I was fearing at the beginning of the season. So I am going to be adding some more compost, putting down another layer of cardboard in order to kind of help hold in that heat and get some hopefully good composting activity happening over the fall, winter, and early spring so that I can give that garden plot a little bit of a jump start for next year's potato patch. I've decided that I am going to be planting potatoes in the same area again. I want to see how I can do with the no dig potato growing method. I'm not too concerned about fungus or pests because I have such a wide variety of potatoes and because this was the first year I grew them there anyway. So I figured I'd have two seasons at least before I had to start worrying about some kind of fungal or bacterial risk. Without a doubt, our heaviest producer, the most consistent plant size, as well as the most consistent tuber or actual potato size was the classic Yukon Gold. I'm not gonna lie, when I got the Yukon Gold variety, I wasn't very excited about it because you hear about Yukon Golds all the time. And for me, part of the charm of growing my own food is that I get to try weird, different, and hard to find heirloom varieties or like the Russian blue purple potatoes, things that are just a little less common in your grocery store. So when I got the Yukon Gold, I wasn't necessarily ecstatic about growing it, but I now understand why this is such a celebrated potato variety 
it produced the most consistently even tubers. They are uh, most of them around this, around this size, a large golf ball to a baseball size. Yes, there are quite a few that are small, but not as many as the rest of the plants. So I think they did a really good job sucking up that moisture and they consistently produced a fair amount of potatoes. So definitely we'll be growing the Yukon Gold. Hopefully <laughs> not in a life or death situation where I have to provide all of my potatoes that I'll need for a year because I am not there yet. The French fingerlings, the banana variety, um, I got a fair few that were this size, but I have so many tiny little fingerling potatoes. They do look really delicious. Their skin is quite waxy. They came out of the ground really clean and each plant had probably upwards of 15 to 20 tubers on it. So again, with more consistent watering, more watering, a good rainfall here and there, I have no doubt we would have had a lot larger of a harvest off of the banana fingerling plants. But again, I guess I'm going to have to just eat some early potatoes, boil them, mash them up, we'll see. But I'm going to definitely save seed potatoes from each of these varieties to try again next year. If you guys are no-dig potato growing experts, by all means, leave me your tips, tricks, and advice down in the comments. I'm sure there are other people watching this video who would benefit from your knowledge. I am obviously a beginner, and I'm just excited that I had the opportunity to grow potatoes at all. I really enjoyed growing these potatoes, and I am even more excited to eat them and compare flavors, especially the Russian blues. I've never had a whole blue potato all the way through. I think it's going to be really exciting. I'm excited to see the difference in textures between things like the French banana fingerlings and the red chieftains or the classic Yukon gold to the store-bought russet potatoes. There is a lot of testing and trial and new experiences happening and I'm just really blessed and excited that I found all of this joy in gardening this year. If it is your first time to the channel, feel free to subscribe. I am endeavoring to grow a lot of food myself, build a homestead, and create, cultivate, and live an abundant life full of joy. And on this channel, I share all of the different ways that I do that. Thank you guys so much for being here with me and sharing in this wonderful No Dig Potato experience. This was genuinely one of the biggest highlights of my 2021 growing season. It's my first No Dig bed. It's the first time I've grown potatoes and I get to now eat and enjoy and share and experience a bunch of different potato varieties and start planning for next year. I will see you all next time. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye.